Hello everybody, this is the video tutorial for your first sketch of the year. Um, we are going to be doing a sketch learning the material uh, graphite pencils. So this is something, I chose this as the first sketch because it should be something that's familiar to you because this is very similar to the pencils you use every day. The only difference is the light is a bit softer and darker, so it's better for fading and blending and getting nice smooth and dark values. So in Schoology, I have posted this sketch assignment handout. So this is the example of what we're going for today. So this is not a sketch where you're going for like a beautiful setup, layout, something like this. It's purely skill building. So I don't care if your sizes are different than this or if the placements aren't quite as neat. You're really worried about getting nice blending skills and learning to work with the material. So the end result is going to be more like a practice page when you're done, but hopefully you get some good skills and it turns out to be a nice looking practice page. So the first thing you want to do and pause this video when you need to is you need to get yourself a graphite pencil. So I will probably have the bin pulled out, but if not, it's in a bin that's in the front of the room with most of the other art materials. You also want to grab yourself um, several stencils. If you can't find any, you could use like a roll of masking tape or any random cup or jar that you find and you need a straight edge of some sort. So you could use a ruler or even the edge of this will work fine. You're not really measuring, you just need a nice straight, set, straight solid edge. Okay, and an eraser if you don't already have one. I have a bin of multiple types of erasers. I'm using this one, but whatever you like. The first technique you wanna practice is just creating a gradient. So, I have to lift this up here, okay. So when you start, just start pressing as hard as you can to see the darkest value you can achieve. And I know this is kind of blurry right now. I know there's like an autofocus thing. I'll try and get it to focus. I'll focus it eventually. Oh, there we go. All right, so just practice getting a dark dark. So it's not gonna be a true black, but it is gonna be a very dark gray with this. And then as you move your hand across, I want you to just lighten up your pressure and you will slowly start getting a lighter gray. Okay, and just lighten, lighten, lighten as you move. Try to make it one continuous scribble. Stopping and starting will give you kind of like some jagged edges. And see how light you can get it before you fade it out. Now, you want a nice, slow, continuous transition. Um, and say, like right here, it drops off in value really quick. So you can always go back over and layer it to kind of smooth it out or slow down the fade if you need to. I usually do it twice anyways because some of the streaky lines that you get a second round through will smooth them out. So sometimes I do it two, three, or four times just to practice. And then the second thing you can do to practice control is to get an individual value like at a time. So obviously getting a dark is easy because you just press as hard as you can. But then a medium gray, how hard do you need to press to match that? And you can just practice doing little swatches where you're matching each value and you can press harder every time or you can just keep layering. So if you're not comfortable pressing a whole lot harder, start light and just keep scribbling over until you build up that value. So you can see I got a little dark there, but I'm talking and shading. So these are just practice things to do before you start actually filling in any forms. Okay, so we are going to start with a sphere. So take your circle stencil and again, pause this video whenever you need to. So, you know, you could watch it and then pause and rewind and follow along. You can follow along the whole time, but let this be a good tool for you where you're not in a huge hurry. Work at the pace you need to. So you can use um, this handout. I'll have a couple print offs or you can pause it and have Schoology open where you can look at the example or you can just Google the term sphere to see what a sphere looks like. So it's a circle that's shaded so it looks three-dimensional. So when you are shading, you need to have a designated light source. So where is the light coming from in this environment? So I always kind of have my light coming from the top left whenever I'm doing an example, but you can have it coming from whatever direction. And what I also like to do for beginners is have them very, very, very lightly, I hope it shows up, mark out an area where the highlight is the most extreme. Okay, because remember this ball or the sphere is rounded so the light's going to hit at its peak of the roundness on the side of the light. So it's not quite on the edge because it's curving back here, if that makes sense. Okay? And in that same respect, your shadow is going to be on the opposite side 
okay? And it gets deepest, not quite towards the edge, because a lot of times light bounces. So if there's a light coming this way, it could hit off a wall and you'll get a little reflected highlight there. So I usually like to make the deepest part of the shadow just off the edge so that you have that reflected highlight. Once you have that in there, you just start shading. Okay, try to make your strokes as long and continuous as possible. Try not to be too choppy, but this is practice. So get familiar and just improve your technique as you go. So what I do is I just get that dark edge in first and then I do that fade. So I'm starting to just get lighter. I'm not fading completely because the light still is on the opposite side, but I am just going to get a lighter value towards this edge. Trying to make it as smooth as I can, and part of that is moving my hand in the direction of the edge. So I'm not going up and down, I'm not going side to side. I'm always keeping my hand moving in the direction of the edge of the sphere. Okay, now this is pencil, so if you do get too dark, you can erase, but you're going to try to avoid any of that. Okay, so that's the first step, it's just a smooth little fade, it sort of looks like a crescent moon. And then you're going to start working your way in towards the inside of the sphere. So again, you're keeping your hands moving in that circular motion. Anytime you have shading that's done in a direction that doesn't mimic the actual object, it sort of reads as being wrong. So I'm working my way in. I'm sort of going to circle this in just to get that shading started. Okay, Here, because this is the side of the light, it's never going to get super dark. Okay, so I'm sort of doing a little fade here just to get that started. And you can kind of jump around if you need to to work on whatever area you're most comfortable with. Sometimes I like to fill in this spot because it's such a quick fade that I like to just get it done and out of the way. And then I can come back to it later. So I'm fading these all into white. Okay, now I'm going to work my way back over here. Adjusting my pressure. When in doubt, press lighter than you think you need to. You can always add more, but taking away is a little more challenging because you might have to erase and then you might have streaks from your eraser. So I'm just working my way in. Okay, and some people like a really extreme, like big bold highlight. So even though I marked out this small one, if you're starting to like the look of this large highlight, you can make it a really big one. Depends on what kind of surface, if it's a tennis ball, the highlight would be less extreme than if it was like a shiny rubber bouncy ball. So all these things we're sort of just making up. So you go with what looks good at the time, unless you're trying to mimic something specific. Okay, so now I'm getting into this really, really, really light area. So I'm barely pushing it all. And there are going to be some streaks here, so don't panic, you know, a lot. There's, It's just going to happen. Um, and you can resolve those in a few ways. You can just keep layering over them to smooth them out really lightly again. Anytime you're doing touch-ups, you want to be really, really subtle and just build up to them. Okay. Now I'm just looking at this and thinking that I have this really dark area up here, so I need to make sure that's balanced down here. I feel like I need more darks down here. So I'm just going to build up a few more darks on the bottom and on the right side, just so that top being that dark doesn't make too much sense. So I'm just balancing out what I see. Okay, but that's a pretty good one. So, you know, if I'm going to be nitpicky with myself, I would go through the eraser and maybe lighten some of this up and spend a little more time. But this is your first time, so this is your first go. And that I would be satisfied with if I were you guys. And you can always refine these on your own time. So that's number one. That's the sphere. Okay, second one we'll do is a cone. So for a cone, it's basically a triangle, but if it's three-dimensional, the end should be rounded because it's a circle at the bottom. So you can take your uh -huh. oops, sorry, ruler, and I don't care if it's a perfect like equilateral triangle or whatever. This is, again, just practice. So you're giving yourself a fairly even diagonal line on both sides. And then the bottom is just a slight curve, nothing too intense. You know, you want it to be balanced, but this is just practice. So you know, if you have some lines that are a little going crazy, don't worry about it. Okay, again, you can determine your light source, which direction it's coming from, and it is, again, another rounded object. So it's not going to hit right at the side. It's going to hit sort of just off the edge of the side of your light. So again, I like to mark it out so that I know where I'm going to fade, where not to color. And it's the same idea on that opposite edge. 
you start coloring dark, you can leave room for that reflected highlight. So it's just slightly lighter than your deepest shadow area. And then we're constantly moving with this sort of angle. So we're following and you sort of change your angle direction as you color. Okay, lighten your pressure. Sometimes I do cheat a little bit. I know we're supposed to skew in the same direction, but when you're getting into tight spaces, as long as you're shading smooth enough, you can usually get away with changing direction a little bit, but try not to do it a ton. Consistency in the direction is very important for making these things look realistic and round. Okay, And this side, just like the other one, you're not going for an extreme shadow. It's just getting darker as it curls away from the light. And then, as always, look at it, see what looks streaky, see what doesn't quite blend nice enough, what is too dark, too light, and refine as you need to. I like to have a really dark core of the shadow, so if I didn't get dark enough the first time, I do like to add that in really dark and then refade. Some people get frustrated when it doesn't look good after their first round of shading, but for me, it's always in the editing where it starts to look good. Okay, so that is your party hat cone, however you want to think of it. Okay, so that's number two. Okay, third one is a cube. All right, so I do have square stencils if you are not comfortable making your own cube. For the sake of time, I'm just going to lightly mark one out, but you should use um, a ruler to make the line straight. So you guys can pause the videos. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll draw out my square and then I'll take the ruler and just straighten out my lines based on what I had. But when you do a cube, you pick three sides and then the angle is the same. So it's the same like sort of 45 degree angle on all three sides and then they're connected with a vertical. So this is perfectly straight. This should be perfectly straight and horizontal. Okay, and that's straight, that's straight and that will make it look accurate. So a lot of people have diagonal lines in here connecting. So do that the best you can, okay? All right, and with a cube, I'm just gonna keep my light source consistent. Um, it's different because you're not really fading because these are all flat sides, they're not round. So depending on where your light is, you'll have three different values, a light, a medium, and a dark, okay? So if my light's coming from here, let's say this will be my lightest side, that's medium, that's darkest. So. Again, direction does matter, so look at your edges and color in a consistent direction that matches the sides of your shape. Okay, so this is gonna be my medium value. And I'm trying to make it as neat and even as I can. Okay, this is my darker value. To avoid um, any inconsistencies in your value, try to color so that it fills the whole shape, but sometimes it's just not comfortable for your hand to do such a long stroke. So just try to even out so you're not overlapping any one area too much because then you get those sort of dark lines throughout. But as long as you're watching what you're doing, you can resolve any of those uneven areas by just carefully layering to even things out. Okay, you can change direction on edges if you need to, obviously, to give yourself a guideline that you can see. Okay. This is supposed to be my darkest side, so I am going to go a lot darker. I always hesitate to go too dark right away because it's a pain in the butt to fix. So I always go lighter than I think and just add as I need to. Oh, I'm so sick of hearing my own voice. Okay, and then depending, you know, we can add a super light value here because if you leave it white, it does tend to look unfinished. So even if it is my highlighted side, I do like to give it just a little bit of shading. You don't want people to look at it and look like it's just not done. So even a super light. Okay, so there's your cube, three-sided cube. Okay, um, now next, there's two that are very similar. We have, we have a pyramid, which is like the cone, but it's shaded like a cube. And then we have a cylinder, sorta shaded like a cone, but it's circular. So those two should be pretty quick. So for the pyramid, okay, again, you're starting, and I'm just saving you guys some time of watching me knock things around with the ruler, okay? So start with like a triangle, and then 
a longer piece down the middle. And again, use a ruler, straight edge, to just connect those. So there's your pyramid. It can be taller, wider, whatever. But again, you have your light side and you have your dark side. So that makes it pretty easy because there's only two you're working with. But again, getting a consist consistent value is a skill that people should practice. So even if it seems very repetitive, this is good for you to just fill in all these shapes, work on achieving consistent values and textures. Okay, stop, look at it, assess. So here, it's actually, I think on the screen, it's a highlight. There's a shiny part here, but that's actually dark in real life. The camera picks up the highlight because graphite is kind of shiny. Okay, other side. Again, I'm just going for a light, consistent value. Okay, that's all there is to that. And then the cylinder. So for a cylinder, like a Pringles can, Okay, two parallel lines. Okay, making them parallel is, is important for this to look right. I'm gonna shift this over a tiny bit. Hope I don't regret it. Okay, so nice even parallel lines. Those of you who are really paranoid, you can even measure like three inches or two inches and make sure they're the same distance apart at all times. Okay. Bottom is rounded like a cone. And again, I always look at that arc and I try to match the arc on both sides when I'm refining this. Okay. And then the inside is not a circle, but it's like an ellipse, so like an oval. And again, with this, I never get it right the first time. So I sort of lightly sketch it in and then I round it out if it looks too squished flat. Okay. And this one has a little added challenge in there in that you can see the opening. So it is sort of like a toilet paper roll or a Pringles can where you can see the inside. So that's just a matter of making a second ellipse right inside the first one. And you're trying to make the distance sort of consistent the whole time. Okay, and again, that takes a little refining. So just throw it in there the best you can. Refine it. I have so many lines here, I'm losing what I'm doing. So it's okay to make a mistake. I make plenty. And again, this is practice, so do your best. Try to fix what you can, but don't freak out if it's, it gets a little funky along the way. Okay, again, pick a light source. If you want to practice, I'm always doing consistent ones, but you guys can swap it out however you want. Okay, so if this is my light source, that means my highlight, again, is just off that edge. And then this is my dark side. Okay, I'm accounting for a reflected highlight, so I'm starting to shade just off the edge, and I'm getting my darkest shadow there. Fading it towards the edge. The shadow I, I will make darker later. Okay. And then again, you're doing a nice consistent fade. I'm sort of annoyed at myself that I made this so tall. Because then I have to keep the consistent lines, but it's all good practice. Sometimes I will do like a little version of the fade over here just to see how I like the look of my values and then I'll try to match it across and usually in the matching there's some fixing I have to do. Okay. And you probably have noticed as you've been doing this that you get a nice like sort of flattened edge as you color then that gives you a smoother texture. When you're first starting if you have a perfectly sharpened pencil it tends to be a lot streakier and sharper and then the more you work with it, you'll get a nice flat side. And then if you hold your pencil the right way, you can always use that flat, smooth side. Sometimes before I start a sketch, I'll work out that flat side to get it ready for me. Okay, and then again, really quick fade along the edge. Not quite as dark. But anything that is round will get darker towards the edges. Unless I literally had a lamp pointing straight at that edge. But when I put a light source here, I'm kind of assuming it's up in the air to the left. Because we're thinking three-dimensional, not flat on paper when we're creating these illusions. But there are times where the light is directly to the side. And then you would have a highlight over there. But that's more unusual. Okay. I went a little overboard with my shading here. So you can always erase and highlight. So... You do go overboard, it's perfectly fine, so erase, you know, get those off. And then you can use your finger 
or a blending stump to sort of smooth it because sometimes the eraser leaves a really sharp edge. So this graphite is very soft, so you can smooth it out. Okay, and then here's the thing to note here. On the inside of a cylinder, the shadow is on the same size as the light source because it's not getting inside behind these walls. So you're flipping your shading when you're doing the inside of an object. The shadow on the inside is opposite as what's on the outside because the light sort of gets in there and has your highlight being right there. Okay, so there are your, there's a little highlight again. There are your forms. They are not shapes because shapes are flat, forms are three-dimensional, so these are all called shaded forms. And then the last finishing touch, all of these forms are sort of floating in midair right now, so I don't know if you noticed, but these all have shadows. So assuming that these are sitting on a surface, they would cast a shadow. So that's the last thing you're going to practice with each one. And it's actually, for me, getting a cast shadow for a sphere is still something I struggle with doing well. Um, but I will walk you through each one, and hopefully it comes out good, but if it doesn't, it doesn't. We're just practicing. Okay, so your shadow is always going to move away from the light, and it's going to mimic the shape of the object, but it's elongated usually. So if you like are walking outside at 5 p.m., you'll notice your shadow is really longer and more exaggerated than your body. So it starts underneath, and it's just sort of like an oval. Okay, so depending, it could come forward. If the light's behind, the shadow will move depending on where the light's coming from, but just pull it away and a stretched out version of what your shape originally is. Shadows are always colored horizontal because they are not a real thing. It's just blocked light, so it's flat on the table. So you should color them horizontally and flat. Okay, and then as the shadow gets further away from the object, more and more light sort of creeps in there, especially the reflected light, so your shadow will get fuzzier and lighter. So super dark and you're fading, you don't have to fade all the way, but it's just a little less precise and a little less intense. So there's the cast shadow for that. Okay, so for the cone, same idea, comes off the bottom sort of just an elongated version, okay? And with this cone, sometimes what you want to do is get a really dark line right where it sits on the table. Okay. And there's so many things to consider when you're making a real shadow. Um, sometimes they're really short, depending on how high the light is up and how far away it is. So. If it looks wrong, it could be just a weird technicality of how you placed your light source. So just practice, do your best. Fade it out, it doesn't have to have a solid edge. Okay, cubes are always weird to me as far as the shadow. So this one, I think I'm gonna have coming a little more forward. Okay. And again, everyone's gonna wanna color up and down here, but try to resist the urge. Color horizontally, it'll help that illusion that it's a flat shadow on a flat surface. Anytime you color up and down, it reads as something that should be standing up. Okay, and again, the edges can be fuzzy. They don't have to be perfectly precise. They're just sort of fading away. And you just work your way through. So, It's always hard when you're making something up. So if you are really struggling, you can look up pictures of forms with cast shadows and sort of see how the shadows fall and copy that rather than making it up. But it is nice to try and make it up so you learn to think your way through it so you can understand what it should look like. Nice and heavy and dark. color horizontally. I know you can't see this very well, but hopefully you're working while I'm working. Okay. It doesn't have to have a precise end point depending on your light. You can go on forever or not. So, oh, let's see that. So there's that one. So that is your sketch assignment. Um, and again, don't feel like you have to be working at my pace. I don't know if you've started yet or if you just watched this whole video, if you've been pausing, but if you're not happy with certain things, try to identify what you might have done wrong. 
so that you know how to fix it. Um, and just keep practicing. The more you do it, the better you will get. Like I'm not super thrilled with a lot of what I've done here, but it is what it is. And I know I can do better if I just spend more time refining it. So you guys can refine these as much as you need to in the next class or at home. And they are always due on the Friday after they're assigned. So you have a day or two to refine these and get them handed in. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to help you live in person. You don't always have to just focus on this video. Sorry you had to listen to my voice for so long, but hopefully this was informative and good practice for you. So when you are done, make sure you have one of each form. They're fully shaded. They have a cast shadow and you can turn it into Schoology or you can turn in the actual sketch to me. Um, we'll talk about that in class. Thanks guys. Good luck.